All right, so our universe is four-dimensional. Three dimensions are for space, and one is for time. Now, let's mix them together. Ah, we're getting a nice dough called space-time. This dough has one amazing feature. Even though you can't use it to bake a pie, you can bend and tear it. Now, forget about our culinary analogy. We're going to space. Waves traveling through space-time can travel at speeds much greater than the speed of light. Now, when it comes to propulsion, or simply put, moving forward, traveling through space by ejecting hot gas from the back of your spacecraft is not the most efficient approach. But a much more elegant way is to manipulate the fabric of space-time around your ship. That's how we get to the topic of the Alcubierre warp drive. So far, it's just a hypothetical concept. But who knows, maybe in 10 or 20 decades, we'll use this device to visit our relatives who have moved to the other side of the Milky Way. Anyway, the warp drive theoretically contracts the space-time in front of a spacecraft, simultaneously expanding the space-time behind it. It allows the ship to move from one point to another at an insanely fast speed. While the spacecraft would be distorting space-time, someone outside the ship's warp bubble would observe it moving faster than the speed of light. At the same time, if you were that lucky traveler inside the ship, you'd feel no acceleration whatsoever. If we could make such a superluminal warp drive a reality, a uh, superluminal, which is a fancy word to describe something faster than the speed of light, it would change our lives for good. It would enable us to travel all over our solar system and perhaps help us reach neighboring star systems as well. For example, we could get to Alpha Centauri, the closest to a star system located a bit more than 4 light years away within days or weeks instead of thousands of years. Unfortunately, I gotta quench your enthusiasm, my friend. The warp drive has a huge problem. The force behind its operation, which is called negative energy, involves pretty exotic particles. Even worse, they're completely hypothetical and, as far as we know, don't exist in our universe. Scientists have only managed to describe them in mathematical terms. These exotic particles behave in unexpected ways. For example, they have negative mass – boy, I wish I could pull such a trick after a big family dinner – and they work in opposition to gravity. But wait, there's still some hope left. A new discovery might solve this seemingly unmovable roadblock. Researchers from New York City have envisioned a positive energy system that does not mess with the known laws of physics. The authors of the study claim that it's a game changer and could be the first chapter in the manual for interstellar travel. You see, this positive energy makes all the difference. Now let's say you're an astronaut on a spacewalk and you decide to play tennis out there. So, you push the ball away from you. But instead of floating away, the ball pushes back. And this confrontation can continue to the point that it might take your hand off if you apply enough force. Now, that's a quality of the negative energy the warp drive needs. But as you can see, there's no way to harness this energy, and it sounds rather dangerous. That's why we should probably turn to good old positive energy for the construction of the warp bubble. This bubble is a spherical structure surrounding a spacecraft using a shell of regular, albeit super-dense, matter. The bubble propels the spacecraft forward using the powerful gravity of the shell. But the passengers inside the ship don't feel any acceleration. An elevator ride is apparently more eventful than hurtling through space in such a bubble. All because of the immense density of the shell and the pressure it would exert on the interior if controlled properly. And since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, according to the theory of general relativity, the bubble is designed in a way that those inside could experience normal time. At the same time, the bubble compresses the space-time in front of it and expands it behind the ship, just like that warp drive that uses negative energy. It allows it to ferry itself and the craft unbelievably fast. The walls of the bubble produce the necessary momentum, just like the momentum of balls rolling. If you decided to take up the task of controlling a warp bubble, it would require a great deal of coordination. Such bubbles need enormous amounts of matter and energy to keep passengers safe and maintain the correct passage of time. 
Plus, communication between people inside and outside the bubble would become super distorted during the passage through the curvatures of warp space. Now, of course, there are still tons of problems researchers need to deal with before finally building a working warp drive, but some of them claim that the model should eventually get close to the speed of light. But even if it remains below the speed of light, it'll still be a great improvement compared to our today's technologies. Hey, see for yourself. Traveling at even half the speed of light to Alpha Centauri would take 9 years. In contrast, Voyager 1, which is currently traveling at 38,000 miles per hour, would need around 75,000 years to reach our neighboring star system. There are some more things to consider. As you approach the speed of light, things get really weird. For example, the faster an object moves, the greater its mass becomes. And this mass can increase infinitely, so that the object will need an infinite amount of energy to maintain its speed. Another issue? Current models allow a stable warp bubble only for a constant speed. But then, how are you supposed to accelerate at the beginning of your journey? And what should you do when you eventually need to slow down and stop? Experts claim that the process of the creation of the warp drive is like trying to figure out the concept of the automobile for the first time. We can compare the stage at which the warp drive technology is with the car technology at the end of the 19th century. At that time, automobile travel was possible, but it looked like a tricky process not everyone could deal with. Now, the whole warp drive idea is to stretch and squeeze space to zip around the universe. Well, there's a theory that's even wilder. What if, instead of bending space-time, we just ripped it? Think about it like this. When you bend space-time, you still have to deal with all the stretching and compressing. It's like folding a paper map. You still have to drag your finger across the folds. But try ripping the paper in half and slapping the two ends together. Bam! You're already at your destination. So, how can we rip space-time? We might not need to. Black holes may already be doing it. At the center of a black hole, gravity goes nuts. Everything compresses into an infinitely small point, and time itself stops. This point, called a singularity, might be that very rip in space-time. And if you could ride your spaceship into a large enough black hole, gravity might be smooth enough for you to survive the journey. Eh, maybe. And then, some scientists think you might pop out the other side of the universe through a white hole. Okay. Now, another type of rip is called a wormhole. Unlike a black hole, wormholes have both an entrance and an exit. They're like a cosmic tunnel shortcut. If we could figure out how to find them, open them, and keep them from closing again, we could get the key to intergalactic travel. And now, get ready for a twist. Quantum tunneling. Now, let's say you're playing a video game, and your character can magically walk through walls. It's kind of what particles do in quantum tunneling. Particles can tunnel through barriers, even if they don't have enough energy to go over them, thanks to their wavy quantum nature. But what if particles could quantum tunnel through connected wormholes? Instead of just sneaking through a wall, they'd be taking cosmic shortcuts through space-time zipping from one part of the universe to another instantly. In theory, this could open up totally new possibilities for how we understand the universe and travel across it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.